Behold, my labors of three and a half hours. Maybe more. I don't know what time is it. It's, oh my god. Okay, so, welcome to the review. It's a double review. We're looking at the ZMF uh, Atriums. Where if you don't know what the ZMF Atriums are, they're one of the prettiest headphones ever made. But we'll get about to how they sound in a bit. But we're also going to be like half reviewing the Aoun uh, XC1 audio clock. Because I didn't think this was going to get an entire 20 minutes of me raving about it. Because it's the audio reclocker that the Aoun Exynos GT and the other Aoun products can use to do a master clock timing thing. So we'll talk about that a bit. We'll talk about what, what the fuck is going on here. So, oh God, my spine hurts and I'm sitting in an Aeron chair. I got sent the atriums. Zach, Bevan, wonderful. They're like, hey, we're gonna send you the atriums. And I'm like, sweet. And they sent it to me with four different pads. And that's these pads. Um, the Otor Suede's, the Otor Sheepskins, the Universal Sheepskins, and the BE Squared Hybrids. Didn't ask for any of them, they just said those. And I got them, and I, I forget which ones were on there by default, but I'm like, all right, these headphones are just okay. And I'm like, no, 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 $2,700, top of the line, newest, everyone's jacking it. There's gotta be something better than the one that came with, the one it came with. So I started swapping the pads that it came with. And that led to me swapping to other ZMF pads that I had. And that led me swapping to other pads that I had. And that led me swapping to every pad that I, well, it's not every pad, I literally have a box filled to the brim with pads. So we're gonna have to stop before I lose my fucking mind. By the way, coffee, thanks to this trash taste mug, Faye wallpaper available in the description. If you don't see wallpapers, by the way, cause I got a community guideline strike for one of the wallpapers on the sound demo channel, it wasn't even a sexy one. And they're like, no, nudity and pornography. I'm like, are you high YouTube? <sighs> Cause you high, but I will not take a community guideline strike for wallpapers. So at some point wallpapers might only be available through the, through the Horde link, which is the Resilio Sync, which is the BitTorrent protocol, whatever. Watch my video on the second channel. Anyway, these headphones. So I started this journey. Uh, I was very, I was ignoring them for as long as I could because I know how good they're going to be. And I know every other headphone in my lineup, which actually I don't have many sitting there, is going to be like, it's going to pale in comparison once I find the perfect combination. Because what I did years ago was get the Verite closed. I got the Verites and I was like, meh. And I learned my lesson because I got the Verites, went meh, and everyone on the internet went, Zeal's, you're a fucking idiot. You have no idea how good the Verites are. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look, I stand by my decision. I listened to them and that's what I thought. And that was when I was very young. I was young, I was a child, like this high. And so the Verite clothes show up. Friend Joe brought me his Verite clothes, not one sent by ZMF, not ones that had to go back out. He sent me his and I started, I, I used them and I was like, all right, Verite clothes are okay. They're just okay. I've heard better, I like the icons better, whatever. But then I swapped pads like twice. And I swapped pads and all of a sudden the Verite clothes went from okay to these are the best sounding headphone, closed back headphone, any headphone I've ever heard ever, ever. So that sort of like put me in a very panicked mode and f realized that I, maybe I could have fixed the Veritas. The original Veritas, if I would have had all the pads, I would have swapped all the fuck pads, if I would have just popped all the pads. So when these showed up and I thought they just sounded okay, I had a little panic attack. Cause I'm like, oh God, I can't give that review again. There's gotta be, a, um, I gotta be able to unlock, there's a secret. It's like the movie Pi. You ever see the movie Pi? Go watch the movie Pi. It's all black and white. And it's about a mathematician not a numerologist, a mathematician who figures out the patterns of the fucking world is in spirals and ants or in his eyes. It's wild. Um, so that's what it feels like because I started this with a grid pattern for six pads. And now there's like squares inside of squares that have the numbers that I cross out. No, this is... Welcome to Zero Reviews. I don't usually drink coffee. Don't worry, I won't drink it for the next one. So... Want the, the short story? I'll shorten this up so it's not a 60 minute review. There are one, two, three, four, four remaining nine out of 10 pads. I give everything a score. I wrote down the things I heard. And after I went through the entire list and started grabbing more pads and testing, oh, this one sounded good, so maybe this one. 
I went through, I went back upstairs, took a leak, got more coffee, came back downstairs and went through them all again and changed the scores accordingly. And then went from, because I was using a specific list of music that I, I have like 15 tracks here that I was testing to see if I could put them in sound demos because sound demos, you know, the song might get a block worldwide or it might be fine. I don't care if it's not monetized. I just don't want to be blocked worldwide. So I kept these same 15 songs for the first round. This way I had, you know, very common things. And then for the second round, I went uh, free balling and I was just everything in my playlist. Everything in my playlist. And the problem with swapping a pad is you have to give it like four songs. Maybe not all the way through, but at least a solid minute of a song. You have to get into it. You have to feel it. It's like getting in a pool and jumping out. Like, was the pool good? I don't know. Too fast. You got to sit in it for a while. So I, I got in this pool, this amazing pool of the ZMF atriums. And I was like, holy shit. I didn't even know that you could ruin a headphone with a pad this this much, this hard. But there was some in here that I, the lowest grade now is a, still a six. There was a five, and I erased that five. It, was not, it wasn't that bad, but there's a six down here. There's a couple sevens. There's a bunch of eights. Eights are like, all right, I don't hate this. But why would you get a pad that isn't an eight or a nine? And I was looking for a 10, and I this is as close to 10 as I can get. And guess what? It's not even made by ZMF. So that'll be fun. Sorry, Zach. Um, although I do have good advice for them. Uh, okay, so coffee. Putting these back on. These are the the ones that I'd probably am I gonna leave on there. These are Brainwaves XL fenestrated. I don't know if they're sheepskin or if they're uh, protein leather, but I think the main thing I found about these is they're very large. They're a spinning three knuckle. You've got so much volume in here. When you look at like CMF pads, they're all much more, much more refined, smaller, a little denser foam. Um, those are probably the ones I'm just, those are available, they're like 50 bucks. But of the actual ZMF pads, and I have Icon Suede, Auteur, I got all these, the ones that I liked the most are here, and I got these out of my box, these didn't come with the shipment, and I have them labeled ZMF Aeolus. Which they don't sell Aeolus pads. That isn't a pad that's an option on the website. And these are old. These are from my original Aeolus, the ones I sold in the yard sale. Not the special editions that are there. The original, original ones, I just had them and I, I labeled them with a marker and I threw them in a box. And I took them out specifically for this. And the closest I could think they are is they kind of resemble the thickness of the BE2 hybrids. So these might be BE2, they might now be labeled as BE2 sheepskin or lambskin. I remember what it is. So these, these get a nine out of 10. And these are, the word I wrote down, there's only two words. A lot of these are like fucking words. Like we just going over it. The word was balanced for the longest time. And then I slashed it and went default. These should be the default pads for, for these headphones because everything was balanced. It didn't do anything too harshly or too soft. It wasn't more sound stage or less. It was just, just fine. It was just fine with these pads. I mean, I should probably prefix this with these are the best headphones that ZMF has made. Do I think they're better than the Veritate Closed? I haven't heard the Veritate Closed in a couple years. Like they, I don't have a pair and Joe hasn't brought them over in a while. So, or maybe I have heard them, but it was at least a year ago. But I can tell by this driver that it is capable of so much. I actually took it apart because I had to fix an error I made. And I got to see the driver itself and the surround on the driver that actually moves the driver up, that actually the, the driver flo floats on, is like the size of a speaker surround. Like that shit's got movement. Like holy crap, like that has a special driver in there. And when you have a special driver in a wooden cup, and this is beautiful by the way, this is like gorgeous. They do the finish work. My only wish is that the, uh, I kind of want a satin finish on this, not a shiny one, but either way, look at this. I think this is brass. They have rose gold. They have different colors for this. But um, standards, I probably look at the build. Standard ZMF build. You have the adjustable stalks. You got this uh, comfort strap, which is like the kind of leather. I want a belt, a leather jacket, a wallet. I want everything made out of ZMF head straps. And then in case this, for some reason, isn't good enough, under it, what you're never going to touch is more leather. 
more leather with more padding and the padding on top and ZMF and, and the clamp is just oh so good. And then the wire is up on my desk upstairs where I was using this. And this is a uh, hard audio cable, which by the way is having a sale between May 17th and June 18th. I think June. It's somewhere in June. Anyway, I'll link to the coupon code that gives you 10% off all uh, Heart Audio Cables. This is not a sponsored video by them, but I'm just giving them the shout out because uh, I love their stuff. And I was using it to use the multiple amps. We'll talk about the amps in a bit. This is probably going to be an hour long video. Just accept that. Use the timestamps below to jump around. So, <sighs> the potential to unlock these headphones rests solely in the pads. And I'll just give you a quick rundown on the pads that were the worst, in case for some reason you wanna know that. If you wanna skip this part, again, time jumps, jump ahead. Uh, the six out of 10 were these, and I had them labeled Odyssey pads, and I thought these were Dakoni Odyssey pads, and I looked at them and went, wait, no, these are actual, like, either, are these Odyssey pads? Like, Odyssey Odyssey pads. I don't know, they have a very unique, like, stripes in there. Because, I mean, I, that's the only clue I have, and I've got a little bit around here. So unless they're something by like Monoprice that is meant to look like Odyssey pads, those are Odyssey pads. Six out of 10, a painful bass rumble. They have wide sound stage, but they sound tunnel-y. That's a word. The way I do the lists here, by the way, is I don't try to like write down bass, treble this. The first thing that comes to mind, if I think cheese sandwich, when I put on a pad, I write cheese sandwich, try to deduce what the hell I meant later. It's a very emotional thing, headphones. Listening to this, like trying to be objective about sound is very hard and then you drink a lot of coffee and then it's like ha 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 so yeah six out of ten they'll suck um let's see what else is up here oh these are the xenon pads uh mod house uh amazing fucking pads on like five different headphones i tried them on these are the ones i put on my t60 argons that turned them into basically these well no they're not quite this but my god xenon pads from from mod house which are made by dakoni and then sold through mod house only those were terrible. I was waiting for those. I literally saved those for like the last. And I was like, oh, here they come. Here they come. Here, oh no, there they go. Just like, it took me like five songs and then I took them off my head. Those were a six out of 10. Uh, two sealed. That's another thing. With the driver in there, uh, these vents are only on the back of the driver, not in the chamber where your ear is, which means if you have a very tight sealing pad and you push it, it actually, you could feel the driver get, like, it just stops making sound. It goes, Whoo, which is kind of like stacks, which is another thing we're going to talk about because stacks, when you get a mod that makes, like, like the old style stacks have different pads, they actually adopt really well. And I don't know what, what this and stacks have in common, except for maybe moving a large portion of air. But these take some pads that I never thought I'd be able to use again and do shit to them. But yeah, if you have a really sealed thing, you could like, if you if you put them on your head, you hear you hear it goes, because the, the, the driver actually flexes back to the extent of it. It's like, that's dangerous. Anyway, so yeah, those sucked. Um, great on other things, but those sucked here. Xenon pads. The uh, Icon Suede's are 7 out of 10. These things, I think the Icon Suede's were the ones that I, that turned the Virate closed into God. I found them randomly in the box. I'm like, oh my god, I've got a set of Icon Suede's. These are for the ZMF Icons, and these are the Suede's, and I put them on the Virate Clothes, and it was like, oh, I think you can verify that with research that I'm not willing to do because I don't want to load YouTube on this computer. It does not like that. So yeah, Icon Suede's, 7 out of 10. I wrote heavy bad. Like, they make it sound heavy. Like, the weight of the sound is like, oh my god. But bad, not in a good way. There's heavy good somewhere on this list, and they sounded ringy. Like, it just rung out. It was, it was no, seven bad. Um, the Aut Autor Sheepskin, which are these, which remarkably look very similar to something like the Universal, right? So like here's the Universal, and here's the Autor Sheep. Like, Zeos, what are you talking about? Like, these have a flat surface, and these have a slightly rounded surface, but the densities of the foam, and I don't know what are the small changes... This is an 8 out of 10, it was a 9, then went down to an 8, and this is a 7 out of 10, and I wouldn't recommend it. Where am I going? Okay, that goes down, that goes down. So yeah, the bright impact on that numbing sound, I wrote a narrow, so 7 out of 10, no one's interested in that. Um, the brainwaves, we'll, we'll talk about it at length. 
The universals. Did you get to the universals? Because you can get the these with the universal pads. I feel like this is a pad swap video, but it's actually the review of a $27 or $2,800 headphone that is amazing. It, it deserves all of this fucking nonsense. We're getting to it. The universals, the thing I wrote down first, the first word was natural. They just sounded natural. I put them on and it didn't sound like anything was wrong immediately. A lot of these you put them on, it's like, oh God, oh God, oh God in a bad way. Only very few oh gods in a good way, but no oh gods in a bad way. Natural slash bright, a little bit brighter, a little more, a little more in the detail. I wrote controlled highs, great imaging, which the headphones are responsible a lot for the great imaging, but I wrote it down on this pad specifically. Then I wrote bass strong. Because it wasn't like I wrote that strong instead of strong, because I don't want you to think like, oh, they're bass heavy. It just can carry like impact pretty good on these universal pads. And then I wrote, I, I took away the nine and I made it an eight and I wrote loud, heavy music can be painful because some of these pads react differently on not different amplifiers. I've got several here I'll talk about now actually, but um, this pair of pads was like, the. this is basically the best you're gonna get if you can't, if I can't figure out what these are. And they're very good. It's just you can't crank it up. But cranking it up, it's like, whoa. It's like doing 105 in a in a 35-year-old Corolla. Like, it'll do it. You just don't want to do it. You don't want to be in that. So real quick, the amplifiers that are being used for this particular night, I've got the Solaris on, and that's a $4,000 amp. Not a $5,000 amp, because it's an amp DAC that's 5,000. If you just use the amp and you DAC it elsewhere, like I'm using the Gashel Labs JNOG, then it's a $4,000 amp, and it's a tube amp. How does the... How do the atriums respond to a tube? Um, well, they don't need a tube, but there's a definite difference when you put it on a tube. It's just a little bit softer. And that, again, swapping every amp while on every pad made this make me crazy. Thank God image stabilization is on a little bit because you people would be dead. Mmm. Kofifi. Um... Yes, amplifiers. I'm. It took a second. So tube amps. Only that tube amp. Um, I'd like to try it either on the Tor Balanced or even the 604 Little X Duo, the little ch cheap like hundred and sixty dollar one that's the balance. I think that would do wonders for this because it does add a little bit of a little bit of something. This is not like offensive if you put it on tubes or it's lacky. They're not super hard to drive. Like that driver movement happens perfectly fine on tubes. But yeah, so that's that's my rant on tubes. Let's get back to pads a bit. Um, the BE2 hybrids, heavy warm. These are the ones that I was sent by. So these have a nice, a nice suede thing here and then solid and solid outside. Heavy warm, first, first, first words. Smooth, smooth. Smooth is important to me. If you're spending this sort of money, I have a, a problem with headphones that try so fucking hard to explain to you why they're expensive. See LCD-5s. If you haven't seen my review of the Odyssey LCD-5s, like, I basically shit on them real hard. And I didn't want to shit on them. I love Odyssey for a lot of their headphones. But when you come out with the X and it's so balanced and fun and enjoyable and detailed, and then you just keep making higher models that are more and more and more expensive. And every time you go up, it feels like they're just trying to prove themselves to themselves. Like that's why I love the lyrics, the Meze lyrics. So the Meze right there, they're the uh, Empyrean elites. Cause those can be argued as one of the most fun headphones to listen to. They don't give a shit. They like, yeah, they're gonna sound great, but let's make them enjoyable. And you want to listen to everything on it and not just like very particular sounds. So, Having a pad that I gave it an eight out of 10 and not a nine out of 10, but having a pad that is heavy, warm, smooth, and I wrote fun and loud. So if you wanted to, if you like to blast your music and you don't want to like go deaf, it's okay to jump down to an eight out of 10 and get the BE2 hybrids. Just, it's fine. It's fine. They sounded fine. Eight, eight out of 10 is fine. Eight out of 10 doesn't hurt me or offend me, but I'm not putting it at a nine. Just all, it's all I'm saying. Um, the Ola Sheep we talked about, that's these. Uh, the Brainwaves XL Hybrids, which are, where the hell are they here? 
So Brainwaves XLs are these huge pads. They are massive. If I look back to back, they're roughly the size of a ZMF, a little bit bigger. Maybe like 8% bigger. I don't know. I can't do math that well. But there's several types, and this one's the hybrid design. And it was an 8 out of 10 because I wrote deep. That was the first word that came to mind, deep like your mom deep and then i wrote classical after it later on because i was listening i was just jumping through every song at that point and some classical music came on and it went from like any sort of problems i have with the sound sort of faded away because when you have classical music and it's very light and there's strings and there's air it was beautiful they're beautiful on that these were beautiful on those pads um overly soft mids again that's a this that's something that i'm diagnosing but it's not necessarily something that's bad if you buy these headphones which you know this this review is basically assuming if you're watching this you probably already bought them if you're watching this decide if you want to buy them i'm trying to give you a little bit of the accessory taste going through this overly soft mids do you want that i don't know if i want that zios is that make it v-shaped not really because it didn't jack up the bass and the highs it just sort of like softened everything made it deep literally wrote deep first i had no idea what i was listening to at first but like in the first 30 seconds i just wrote deep and um i said it had weird highs and upside down lows now go fucking figure what the hell that means but i think like some of these pads made it almost sound like there was out of phase issues but not obviously it's not changing the phase of the actual drivers and the electrical contacts so to have that sort of change happen again pads are this important for a headphone it is one thing to keep in mind so yeah i get those an eight out of ten like i didn't get those a seven they do all this weird shit overly soft highs overly soft mids with weird highs and upside down lows which sounds like you just took some sort of weird drug concoction at a fucking rave in amsterdam but then i wrote deep classical i still gave an eight out of ten so brainwaves xl uh, hybrids uh the odyssey pads the odyssey pads from Daconi. There are four of them, and I tested all four of them. And what I'm going to have to do, because there was two that were nines, I made only one that's a nine, which is the Velour ones, these. Get over here. Um, I'm going to have to ask Dakoni, because I have them like um, I have them on speed dial. I'm going to see if they can make their Odyssey pads, even if it's just for this headphone, without the previously attached, like the pre-attached glue. Because as you see, there's a 3M strip here and a, a plastic ring that's inside all of these. This plastic ring is inside there. Because if you buy Odyssey and you buy you know, their pads for them, you need that stuff because it needs to glue on because Odyssey just can't figure out how to make it not glue on. But the problem is, and I, I tried to fix this on one of them. Where are you? Here? Like, you peel off the adhesive covering and then I literally was rubbing this around and like, dirt to try to get this to not be sticky and it's still kind of sticky and no one wants to put that on their fucking brand new $2,700 headphones so Dakoni, if you're watching if you're not watching I'm gonna message you anyway could you make odyssey pads that don't have the ring attached I think they used to do that and then they just started adding it because you could take the plastic ring out and then it just becomes a normal pad that can be used on any headphone anyway so the four odyssey giant Dakoni pads and I'm going to get into this real quick. I feel like the problem with most ZMF pads is, yes, they have they vary wildly as far as like how they listen. But the one constant is they're relatively small as far as the opening goes. Like, they're all this oval, and they're all like one inch thick. For those of you in Europe who don't know what thick an inch is, it's about the size of your thumb or the king's thumb. I don't know. So they all go with this, this like thick back oval shape. And that's fine. But it... it like, why limit yourself? If you're making headphones and you're making pads, you got to go wild. Like, that's why I think I love the uh, Xenon pads from Modhouse, because these are made by Dakoni. And even Dakoni couldn't make it on their own. That's like thin wall, super soft. It's just so much volume in here. The thing that's lacking in ZMF pads in general is the option for more volume and not volume like loudness like air volume like these xls they're an inch thick just like the Dakonis, but they're an inch thick all around so you get more volume that way and then the hole itself is a three knuckle that i could spin in 
They're huge. And I think that more air space is why these sound great. And now we're going to talk about the Odysseys, which are like two inches high in the, like, well, it's an inch and a half. They're fucking huge. The, the narrow part's an inch. And even though they're the same oval shape, they're so big. I think that's helping them out with sound. Also, we're adding distance. When you go with the Odyssey pads, you're adding distance to the driver. Because if you have a set of speakers and the speakers just don't sound right, try moving them either closer or further away until it sounds more right. And I think the thicker pads are doing that. So let's go over that. The Odyssey suede's these, the Dakota, these are solid ones. Six out of ten. Painful bass rumble. Wide soundstage. Tunnely. I already said that to you already. I read that one. The Dakoni hybrid ones, which are here. No, you're the well, the ones. There. You're the Dakoni hybrid ones. So you have perforated inside, suede here, solid outside. Those get a 7 out of 10, which is a little better than a 6. Nice, question mark. Um, distance and wide and relaxed. So even though I usually like wide and relaxed, I, I couldn't love them enough to give me an 8. So they're 7, so forget those. The ones that used to be a 9 and dropped down to an 8 are the fenestrated, which are the most like the universals just thicker and these i wrote with with like four h's they just sounded wide as hell and then i wrote right after that intense clear so if you're looking for detail these were your detail whores um then i wrote bass control which is like i don't know it's hard to explain like you could have bass you could have more bass, then you could have better bass. Bass, it sounds like it recovers faster and you're just you're controlling. It's not some wonky, oh my God, I can't control anything. These did a great job of controlling the bass. But then the reason I dropped it from a nine to an eight, after my second round of listening, I went twisted towards the highs. So that whole pad made it sound kind of like this. So yeah, the bass was more controlled, but the highs were just jacked up a little bit too much and it did, it unbalanced the, the headphone enough that it wasn't really like, I'm gonna turn this upside down now so you could actually look at it because it deserves to be looked at. Keep in mind, you should just skip past all, because the problem is you can't review a headphone unless you put it on. And you can't put it on unless you find the right pad. And then we can talk about the amplifiers that I got here. And I got to talk again about the uh, XC1, which uh, Linsol sent from Oon. That's running with this. So, or maybe Oon sent it directly. I don't think Linsol sent it. Okay, so yeah. So now those went from a, to, from a 9 to an 8. So I'll put those in the back. The 9 out of 10 Odyssey pads for the atriums are the straight velours. The ones that are just like... Nothing but fabric all the way around. First word, natural. Just like the, the universal pads. Natural. I wrote odd vocals, but I think that was one song because I went through like a hundred other songs and it was perfect. Um, bass, good. Which is all it needs to be is good. And then width and then open. Because these are legitimately open. They sound open because this material, this material, and this material are not stopping sound like a leather would. Like they put leather or sheepskin and then you put the holes in it and that sort of helps a little bit of sound travel through, but these are just sound traveling through. So these were the most, the most open these headphones sounded the whole night was with these. And if you're looking to buy an open back set of headphones, here's the thing, these don't sound very open back. In fact, if I put my entire hand over the back of it while listening, I noticed no change. That's a that's a very Mr. Speakers thing. Uh, Dan Clark audio, a lot of their open backs are so highly damped in the back that if you cover them, nothing happens. And this is one of the first ZMFs that I've done that to, and it's like, oh yeah, nothing happens. So they're doing a lot here. I mean, there's also vents literally fucking everywhere, and I don't know if I could just not, like I just start getting modeling clay and fill it in to see if it changes anything. I'm sure it would. But it's one of those headphones that you get it, it's an open back. If I put this on right now, hold on. If I put this on right now, it definitely drops my ambient hearing like 50%. This is not 
a Sundara where you put it on and like, oh, I could still hear everything or an 800 or I could still hear everything. You put this on and you could feel there's layers upon layers. In fact, I know, oh, I just jiggle the thing. I know due to the fact that the, the pad seal will deform the drivers that once you're in here, it's the pad, the wood, the driver, and the driver is the only thing leading out to the back of this headphone. So to make it sound open, you have to basically drill holes through the pad or use velours like this, which I don't know if, I guess this is the closest thing was the Autour Suede's, which I gave an eight out of 10. Did I not read the Autour Suede re review? Hold on. Removed from music, phase issues, narrow, pain loud, question, shiny highs. And that used to be a, a six out of 10. That was the first one I did. And I made it an eight out of 10 because after I went back, it wasn't that bad. Still not a 9 out of 10, but an 8 out of 10 for the auteur suede. So yeah, suede and velour are different. Suede stops sound, you have to put perforations. Velour is just fucking open. So these are the best for large, wide, open, natural sounding pads for this headphone. All right, Dakoni, Odyssey, Velours, the end. So now... We get on to the two, and this is going to be fucking weird, that I think are the best pads I've heard on them. And don't feel like you need to buy these if you buy these, because there's a lot of good stuff coming that you can get from ZMF. But I, I, I can't lie. It would be so much easier if I could just lie to you. If I could just sit down here and go, yeah, forget all this weird shit. Yeah, these universals are the best one. Just get the universals and you'll be happy. And it's the most you could ever get out of these headphones. But it's not. I know, because I spent all fucking day trying to figure this out. So, a little bit about the brainwaves, and then we're going to talk about the weird ones. So, the brainwave pads, huge. Um, they don't look much bigger than this, but the hole is bigger and centered. And I feel like that somehow makes it just feel... Where's my read? I'm going to read, because I gave that its own spot. Yeah, free space. It was the first thing that came to mind. I put those on, and I didn't feel like I was wearing a headphone anymore. It didn't feel closed, it didn't feel like open, like open, like letting it sound in. <clears throat> but I just felt like there was more breathing room for the driver. Free space. And then I wrote highs, mids, and bass. All things. Just literally wrote all three. That's just everything. I just listed what a headphone can do. But everything got Im immediately just more open. More, more room to breathe. And then I wrote delicate. I had a couple songs playing that were very quiet. And with these on, it was just like, it was, it was like it was penning in my in my ear canal. I was like, oh yes, that's that's beautiful. Wide, even though these are not much thicker than like the standard ZMF and the, or the standard, yeah, standard ZMF and not as high as the Dakonis, these sounded wider than all of those. Maybe not as wide as some of these, but fucking wide. And it's just because I think the front tilts down and this does not tilt down so you get an extra quarter inch in the front of your ear again distance to the driver matters a lot with only a little bit of change get to these um and what was the last thing i wrote plus comfort these are actually way more comfortable than a lot of the zmf pads and zmf pads are not uncomfortable but there's something about the memory foam that they use i don't think they use they did not use memory foam in zmf pads i forget or they do and it's sealed or it's a foam matters a lot and i don't know what's inside of them but the Brainwaves ones are just so fucking soft. They're just so soft. And then finally, um, Great Treble. And that's, I think, why I gave it a 9 out of 10. That's why I'd probably use them. Because the treble, it changes, it varies on all these. But I didn't write Great Treble on any of the other ones. Because, I mean, I was listening, I have one particular song in the New Test uh, from the Grand Budapest Hotel. It's called Up the Stairs, Down the Hall. And if I put it on... I don't have to get any closer than that. It's just angry bells. And it's going to be a sound demo thing. And it's just 28 seconds of the most intense ringing sound. And it hurts. And it's supposed to hurt. That's the that's what bells recorded does. And the level of pain that I went through in all of these was tested with that song. And on this pair of pads, it hurt the least and yet removed less of the detail than a lot of them. So that's that's a very finite balance. You heard the amp click back on. So yes, I, I that's that's one of the reasons he's got a nine out of ten, and I'm probably gonna end up keeping them on here. 
I had a bit of a, a moment. In fact, the patrons, the $10 patrons, I was reporting all this back while it was going on because that's what people in the $10 patronage chat are all about. If you want to support this channel for $5 a month, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, this isn't the loss of sound most, but for $10 a month, you get into the patronage chat where I literally pick those people's brains because my brain's not big enough. I need to pick their brains. And I had a, I had a moment where I was just going around grabbing pads and like, ha, ha, ha. And I grabbed these pads. And these are the most ha, ha, ha pads that exist in my house. These are Sony XMB1000. These are from an old defunct Sony from like the early or late 2000s. And they're ridiculous. They're, they're fucking ridiculous. Like there's the back of an Odyssey and there's that. So it's like, they're ridiculous. Right, you, you grasp that there was a 500, the 700, and the 1000. In fact, I had the waifus sitting in them because I'm like, well, I'm never going to use these, they sound like shit on everything. So I had a pair over there, brought them to this table. I was standing up, I had to go take a leak. I'm ready to leave. All right, uh, ju just just because, just because I thought, just. Ju I, I took the pads pads off. His pads look at the beautiful fucking mesh that protects the driver with the, the screws that are all stainless steel except for, well, they're all steel except for that one that's stainless steel. It doesn't have any magnetism. I don't understand. Are you trying to tell me something, Zach? Is, is someone crying for help? See, magnet, 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 magnet. What does it mean? That drove me mad. Um, the reason the magnets are here is because these stupid, stupid Sony pads, which are, by the way, hilariously soft. Like, these are hilarious pads. They don't work. I had a vision of a cat walking by. These are hilariously soft. Drinking too much coffee. They have no memory. For, they're just like, this is hilarious. Like, I would build a chair out of this and not, like, use it as a headphone pad because it makes everything sound bassy and dumb. And there's no way to mount it either. It's designed to go like in a port that was on these old Sonys. So I just simply put them on the drivers like so. There's a way to do it like that. And then I pick them up and I went, that's ridiculous looking. Ha 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 ha. Put them on my head, went, God, they're fucking comfortable. And then just, what? Why? How? Quatos. I gotta put the. I just. It's just. Why do these sound good? These shouldn't sound good. They should sound like shit, like they always do. And they don't. This gave me a moment of like pause because I've been. Which, by the way, the uh, Emotiva amp is being fed off of this amp. So the XC1, the audio reclocker that is feeding the clock data into this, is affecting it. And that light's coming on. And it actually does sound. Real quick, while I'm wearing these, because I don't want to take them off because I feel good and they sound good. The audio reclocker takes the clock data off of this and takes it from this now. It's already got a sticker. The point of this, and I don't know if it'll work entirely, is because SPDIF inputs don't have clock data. So you're supposed to plug this into not just the DAC you're using, but this into your source, if it can accept clock data, and then it feeds Everything's on the same time wavelength so that one isn't going like blip, 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 and the other one's going and it doesn't match. It's a good, con it's an actual real concept. Like it, it matters, but usually clocks are so close or audio data is not that big that it doesn't, isn't noticing jitter and stuff. But when I turn this on, I have to give this a mini review. When I plug this in, so you plug it in with the, with the transformer, you get four BNC outputs. You turn it on. The front has, it's, it's literally a light up and you can see the words. It says warm or RTF on. And when you turn it on for about a minute, it just has a red light here that says warm because it's warming up the clocks. So this is like a $350 unit that all it does is keep the time. And I couldn't find a sticker of what's her name from Steins Gate because that would have been the best sticker. But I put her on there because she matches the style of that one. But after it warmed up for a minute, it went from warm to RTF on. And now the clock data from this is being fed into this and it's displaying it there. It actually comes with this little BNC cable. It's so cute, it's got little caps on it. But I built my own out of coaxial, which you'd have to do if you want to run more than one thing, which is the goal. And I could legitimately unplug it, 
listen, and then plug it back in and listen, and there's something better. Di mm, different, better, better, different. Is it worth $350 to have your clock data overwritten externally? I think if I had more than just this unit, absolutely. With just this unit, just buy this. It's about the same price as that, and you'll be fine. But if you're actually getting into like crazy audio file shit, why not just add the RTF? So anyway, back to this, powering it now, using this hard audio cable. Don't forget the 10% off coupon code in the description. Good till June 20th or so. So yeah, like Luke's escape from Star Wars, like I am, I am flabbergasted that these pads sound good because they're not supposed to. Don't you understand? These are not supposed to sound good. It's like, you're not supposed to be able to fly, but these can fly. And I had to draw this little square here, and I wrote, best bass. These have the best bass you can get out of the fucking atriums. Probably the most bass and the best, it's both, it's both those things. Which if that's enough for you, you can buy these on eBay. I'll link to them on eBay. I think I can make an affiliate link on eBay too. Because you, you can't buy these pads like at a store. No one sells them. Uh, I just wrote the word highs. I just wrote the word highs. Am I high? What the fuck does that mean? Oh, God, they're so delicate. Because one of the things about these giant stupid soft pads is they're very soft. So you put them on and the thickness doesn't stay. They go away. So it could be as thin or as thick as you want, depending on the clamp of the headphone. Um, seal strong, which I probably shouldn't have pushed it in. I did it slow because it does seal. It doesn't have it. There is no leak. I would almost break the seal here. One of the things that I did when I did my stacks mods is I had pads like this on there, but I put like a straw, like a plastic straw from, well, they still sell plastic straws. Just cut an inch length of it, put it behind the pad just to keep that seal from fucking with it. I'd probably do the same thing with this because that relieves a little bit of that base extra. Um, loud danger. Oh, because of the distance this is adding, as opposed to the other ones, when you turn it up, you're turning it up. Like, you have to turn them up louder to use these, and it's just like, mmm. And there's nothing else that describes the sound, but it's a 9 out of 10. D that's dumb. It's dumb as hell. I, I don't understand it. I'd like to try... I wish other headphones could use these giant fucking donuts. Because that's what's missing in modern headphones is just absurdly comfy pads. This feels like a, like a 2000s or late 90s thing that you would do to a headphone. And I haven't had them work in forever, so they're, they're going to stick with a 9 out of 10. I would have to build something to hold them on here. I'm not going to glue to the wood. That's why I was seeing if these were magnetic, so I could shove magnets inside of here and go click, which would be fantastic. I also thought maybe I could do something with the rings from the ZMS, but they're too big. They are sealed, though. Anyway, so yeah, I guess I should get to the actual final. Let's put on the pads that I'm probably going to use. We'll forget that they're not... There. There's a lot going on in this desk. Well, forget that they're not ZMF pads. Assume that you're going to have the, this headphone with these pads, and let's get to the actual sound of it. Because I've told you the process now for 45 minutes of what it took to get to this level of enjoyment. But now we have to actually talk about it, which I'm probably going to have to change the GoPro battery because I was at like 90% when I started. <sighs> If it dies, it dies, to quote, uh, what's his name from Rocky? Figo? I forget his name from Rocky Four. Holy shit. I'm the worst. We already know how they look. They look beautiful. They're not super heavy. They, they feel like they look. Like, they're not like, oh, my God, these are so heavy, or oh, my God, they're so light. Perfect clamp. They have the uh, mini XLR. Oh, tight. Mini XLR connection. The wire that it comes with is very nice. I'm upset I left it upstairs, but I have to start this review so I don't lose my fucking mind. We put them on with pads that we assume are stock. And there's a power behind these headphones. I've, I've been describing along the way the, the, the driver and the, the driver's new mods and the driver's movement, and you can feel it. I had these headphones playing here on the table, just... 
And I, I've had headphones play on the table before, obviously, and the ones that face up. And they never sound good. They always sound, like, weak. And these headphones just playing on the desk sounded good. Like, that's the sort of driver that's in there. They don't even need to be on your head to know that they're fucking amazing. Which, ZMF, if you're interested in making a Bluetooth speaker, just rip one of these cups off. Just like, right there. Probably blow up, but... Just saying, it's basically a little speaker in there. So when you put that sort of power on your head and then turn it up, it, it feels like I'm opening the taps on a shower. No, showers are too, like something where water, like a liquid goo is now going to flow through this cable up into here and then just fill my ear canals. When you get the right pad, and we got it down to like, okay, we're just doing this. It just sounds like you're pouring music into your head. It doesn't even sound like it's trying to reproduce it. White Zombie, welcome to Planet Motherfucker. Now that is an audio file testing song, if I ever heard it. Let's get to the... Whoa, I right, right there. You hear that girl screaming on Welcome to Planet Motherfucker? Because I haven't heard this. I I've, I've obviously have this song, but I don't remember it. That girl screamed way over there, and then here, and then here, and then over there, and then back over here. And I'm like, ah! Like, there's movement of sound and, and articulation of placement that only you get from, like, a highest-end headphone a, a company can make. That's the sort of shit that I listen for when I pull out a $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 headphone. I want sound to do something special. Do something that, you know, if I take out 600s, like, oh, HD 600s are great. But I've listened to HD 600s over and over and over again. Oh, they sound good in a tube. They sound good, good, good. If you're going to make a $2,700 headphone and Zeos, the cheap motherfucker that I am, and I try to be cheap. There's a thing coming up where we're going to spend some money, but I try to be cheap. I try to be, what's the best bang for your buck? But let's assume now that there's no buck that we can't bang. Wait, that sounded like a hunting joke. Okay, no. Let's assume that this is what you want. You're looking at me reviewing it. Why is this $2,700? And Welcome to Planet Motherfucker just explained it to you. Because <laughs> that shit went completely around and forward. How does it do that? Mike Oldfield, whatever you look, tubular bells. That's gonna be a wow. This is a good. This is a. This is called Mike Oldfield's single, and it's just very calming, like nature, documentary music. Like that's a good set of headphones. A good set of headphones will make you enjoy music you already enjoy. A great set of headphones will make you enjoy music you've never fucking heard before. Like, I probably heard the song when I downloaded the Mike Oldfield Tubular Bells disc, and I probably thought nothing of it. But now I'm like, wow, that's... I should put this into sound demos. It's one of those headphones that if you love music, specifically music, you're going to listen to it and you're going to be happy. But when you find new music, or music you, you've heard once but weren't that impressed, now you're impressed. There's something about every track that you didn't notice before, and now you will. Uh, oh, like, I love Michael Jackson's Thriller. I don't give a shit what the man did. Man made Thriller, and Thriller was fucking amazing. So now... Oh, yep, that door's creaking open. Oh, God, I'm in that door. And now those footsteps are happening? And I've... There is a, that much difference in the sound, and there's a the wolf... The imaging on these is fucking spectacular. Like, I'm in Michael Jackson's Thriller now. This is more of a VR experience than listening to music. I should have more coffee. And then change the battery so we can keep going. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And then the bass hits happen. And all of a sudden, it's not like, oh, bass is happening. No, 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 no. The bass is happening. Like, there's no way. Let's, let's swap off of this, which, by the way, in case you don't know, own X1. 
does make a change. Let's switch back to my um, my new little baby boy here, or baby girl, I guess, Emotiva uh, A2 Mini with the adapter I made to run straight out of the speaker outs in the back because psychotic, and I don't have the, uh, the I'm controlling it with the volume on there. Oof. And you want to watch me make this, by the way, it's on the second channel. I want to dance. I, and it's not, there's no liquor in my coffee. I know you can do liquor in your coffee. I don't do liquor in my coffee, but I know you could. And I still want to dance. It's just, I don't know. Let, let me, all right. A lot of times I listen to music and it's like speakers is forward. And then headphones is sides. Sometimes headphones are sides a little bit wider. And this is circumventing my entire bone structure and just giving me sound in every, or it's, it sounds like some sort of weird VR effect is on it. Like when you ever play, like you get a headset, like the, um, the, uh, the Oculus Rift is one, but I'm gonna put this out to the back because it's super fucking bright and bright blown at the whole thing. It, it's definitely moving sounds throughout the conscious space of my head. Like I think the limits of where I can hear sound from as a human, when we're hunting, you know, hunting, gathering, you know, the year is 5,000 BC and we're, we're stalking through the woods with a spear and you hear a branch crack over there because that's where your prey is that you have to eat and live to survive. This brings that out in music. More than, Virate Closed sort of did something like that and the original Mad Dogs, if you remember my review of the original Mad Dogs, which are actually on the table over there, because I found them and had to clean the pads. My description of the original Mad Dogs, and I'll remember this forever, because it was the first time I actually experienced this. Instead of sounding like there's just right and left, the original Mad Dogs sounded like there was a box. And there were 30 points where that sound could have come from in that box on either side. So instead of just being sound here and sound here, it was sound here or here or here or here. And it moved around in a circle. And it was great. Fast forward to 2022. Fast forward to a 20, it's 27 or 2800. I'm gonna keep getting it wrong, hold on. 2700, that's basically on sale in my mind. Fast forward to those. And now instead of having two boxes on the side with points that you know can do that, your whole head is enveloped in like a high res 4K field of dreams. And sound can move in and out and up and down and across. And it's like Atmos for your brain without being stupid and having Atmos headphones, that isn't a real thing, by the way. The processing can be real, but the actual Atmos thing is just points. Like, you can do that on the mixing thing since you only have two drivers. Don't fucking fall for the Atmos headphones. But I'm imagining Atmos through these would be fucking amazing. Uh, how did I lower this? Uh, inside. Okay, I'm unplugging it from that, which is being dacked by this, and I'm plugging into the musician Andromeda, which is being dacked on the floor down there by the Denifrips Aries 2 R2R, which I already said added something, and now this is one of my favorite amplifiers, hold on, waifu, of all time, powering this, and it's like, oh. And if we want to get off a of solid state into fucking tubes, Uh, okay. The hounds. I just want to listen to Thriller. Can you people just go away and YouTube mute this for a second? Because this is the best Thriller has ever sounded. I could probably sell these headphones just based on that. Have you liked the Michael Jackson Thriller? Do you want to hear the best it's ever sounded? Atriums. That's it. Game over. One song. How cool would that be if they made just specifically a song that works specifically with one piece of music that everyone loves? If you don't like Michael Jackson's Thriller, you haven't heard it. Um, we'll actually shuffle. Oh, but it's... I'm going to go to the laugh, and then I'm going to change. I'm, I'm going to skip skip the last, like, 20 seconds of the song. See, I'm putting my hands on the side, and nothing... Nothing changes. Okay, so... This is the new ship by Marilyn Manson, exact same. Yeah, now these are one of the best headphones money can buy. And they don't do, like, 
they take a bit of listening before you realize that. Some headphones you put on, it's just like immediately, oh, these are great. Uh, I want to still do the Hyperman Susvaras because those are $6,000. And I've put them on my head, powered by a speaker amp. And I knew immediately they did something different from every other headphone that's ever existed. Immediately. I'm like, oh my God, these are great. And some other headphones like these, you put on your head and upon initial listening, remember I just said they sounded okay. Stock pads, they just sound okay. Start swapping pads until you find, and I'm saving you a lot of trouble, hopefully if you buy these pads or the, those pads, you find them, you find the nine out of 10 pads and then you actually start listening because I should probably tell you that there are differences in amplifiers. Obviously tubes will make the biggest change. But, you know, this is like a $300, $350 DAC amp combo. And yes, I've got this XC1, you know, reclocker on it to make that a little bit more. But these are still some of the best headphones ever on this amp and DAC versus this amp versus this $1,100 amp on the $800.65 cent DAC that's R2R versus the $4,000 amp. Like, they're always this good. It doesn't sound bad bad or underpowered. I haven't tried it on like a BTR5, but you know what? I fucking bet balance out BTR5 would rock these. They would still be the best that ZMF has ever made. And you'd be able to turn up the volume and just enjoy the shit out of them. Dragon Ball Z. Sell slow theme. Like, this is not something you hear at an audio show. But with these headphones, it kind of sounds like the best song you've ever heard. Like, oh my God, the mastering on this is incredible. And it, it you know what? Space Dandy. Oh my God, this is definitely going to get me pulled off of the internet. God, everything sounds like it's an audiophile test CD. I mean, some of these, here's the thing. Some of these pads, and I didn't write this down. Some of these pads made it very analytical where I could tell if songs were bad. You know, you have some of those like guilty pleasure songs that are just like, eh, Queens of the Stone Age, kind of recorded like shit. All of Muse is recorded, over recorded, and sounds like shit. All of Muse. If you like Muse, great. I had to find the unbrick walled version of Muse to actually listen to it because it's just fucking solid brick. These pads, this headphone, whatever amp I want, perfect. Everything's enjoyable. That's my minimum requirement for spending this much on a headphone, is everything in my playlist, everything that I use that, that is, is not great should still be tolerable or good, and everything that I fucking love should make me have to change my pants, and these do that. Oh my god, Space Dandy. If you haven't watched Space Dandy, the anime, it's two seasons, and it's based in the Cowboy Bebop universe, and I figured this out, which made it more tolerable. It's a TV show based in the Cowboy Bebop universe. So when Ed and Spike and Jet and Faye are just hanging out, watching TV on the Bebop, the Space Dandy is a TV show that's on. And that blew my fucking mind. That's like watching a Married with Children spinoff where what they're, where Psycho Dad is the show that you're watching. Who remembers Married with Children? It's so fucking good. Yeah, now these are one of the better headphones that's ever existed. And um, once you find the pads, which you're welcome... Uh, yeah, Under Siege. Everything sounds... Oh, okay, here's a song that I know a million times over because it's in my fucking sound demos. Um, Your Head Above the Mayhem from the Evangelion 222. And it's very, very impactful and big and... and uh, I, I don't even... I, you've heard this song a hundred times from my sound demos. This is like dramatic music, and it has never sounded so dramatic. It just sounded like a goddamn orchestra just fell out of a fucking cargo helicopter and landed on me, and it's just playing now. My heart rate's, what's my heart rate going? I'm at 95, all right? It's not because I'm drinking coffee and overweight. No, 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 no. Your head above the mayhem. That's why it's happening. Um, I'm probably at an hour to an hour and five minutes with this video. Uh, if you ignore the entire first part about pads and I just started over like, hey, I put these pads in it, let's review. That started about 25 minutes ago. These are $2,700 headphones. And they're made by Zach and Bev. Well, I don't know if Bev, Bevan, do you actually 
does she sew the things? Bevan's, Bevan is the ma Devin definitely runs ZMF, but Zach is the madman who's putting all the shit together and probably driving her crazy. Um, and as a team, they put out some of the best headphones you can buy. And these are the newest and best headphones you can buy from them, and that means something. My only advice to them is get more pads because once you've heard, I need them, I need, th I'll buy these for them, I'll send it to them in Chicago. Once you've heard this, or this, or this well, this is dumb. Don't, don't do that. Do this if you feel like it, but I mean, just for an experiment and fun. I would love if someone made, wink, wink, I'm winking real hard, but you can't see, so I'll, I'm winking real hard. If someone made a modern set of these, just so I could play with them um, on other headphones. But yeah, no, because I mean, I didn't realize it, but Dakoni actually makes, or I'm sorry, ZMF actually makes pads for headphones, 6XX pads, Bear pads, Sony pads, which these are Sony pads, with, I don't know what Sony is, those are for, Audio-Technica and Sony pads, Grado pads, not Grado, Grado, he's a Grado. Then they make universal oral, or, oral. <laughs> oval. Oral pads is a whole other fucking video. I didn't even see their thing. Ear paired. I threw away two of those ear pad bags. They're worth $10. I have too many bags. It's fine. Anyway, I hope. Can I look at my watch and see if the camera is still blinking? Because frankly, I'm amazed. Hold on, I'm going to shut off phone. I don't need to. Okay, it is still blinking. I don't know how this battery is holding up. This is a fucking Hero 10 in recording in like 2700K at 60 FPS, and it's been going this entire time. I'm amazed. It's going to die right now. These headphones, I don't know where to keep them. Because headphones I love, I put on my desk. And headphones that I want to show off, I leave down here. So now I have to make that decision, because I've got like the, the, the uh, Aeolus over there. I've got the Autors up there. Um, oh, baby, where am I putting you? There we go. I don't know where to put these, because I want to use them all the fucking time, and at the same time, not get used to this sort of living. This is kind of like going and staying at a six-star hotel for like a week, and you know when you go back home, even if you have a nice house, it ain't a six-star hotel. You don't have that cleaning staff showing up. They're not giving you the foot massage. So it's like, it's one of those things you want to take a vacation to. At least me. You can live at the Six Star Hotel. I have to look forward to much cheaper and much worse headphones. And I have to give them a fair shake because not everyone's going to be able to throw this at that money at them. I'm like, what should I buy? Zios, this or this? Um, what's your job? Paperboy. Well, in 13 years, if you save up, atriums. That's, that's the only answer. So Zeos has to forget these exist after I do the sound demo, which I will be doing with these pads, by the way. Maybe I should do it with a couple pads. I, I feel like I'd have to have a good monetary motivation to do that, because sound demos are already annoying enough. Forget about swapping pads in the middle of them. But links to these. This review is over. Thank you to my sponsors. Nobody at the moment. But um, I will link to the, the sale, the 10% off on these uh, heart audio cables which this is this is perfectly fine perfectly fine you can adjust and change you got the one here adaptable heads is fine I, um I, well i can link to triangle now i'm gonna do a link to Faye. Faye's in the description or the every wallpaper ever i'll link to obviously at least the pads that i liked anything that got a nine out of ten i will try to link the pad if we got an eight out of ten and you know the name of it just go search it out but um yeah no i'm done see these reviews early on patreon and subscribe star that helps keep me alive. Please, God almighty. Um, after you see the reviews early, you can participate in yard sales, where I won't be selling any of this at all. I did sell my extra set of uh, Aeolus when I had two, because I magically found my original set. I'm like, what am I doing with this? So things like that, things I reviewed, things I'm done with, buy them on the yard sale, first to the 10th of every month, calm down. Um, listen to sound demos, like the one in the description, losslessly on the sound demo oasis because I keep them the fuck off of YouTube and you can do anything you want. If I move sound demos completely off of YouTube, I can play any song I want and not limited to the ones that don't get me. <sighs> I was so close. I was in the outro battery. You're hot as fuck. Don't charge that till it's cool down. Anyway, sound demo oasis. Um, and then for $10 a month, the exquisite price of a one Chinese food lunch for one month, 
you will get, well, actually for up to three months, you will get access to the behind the scenes private Telegram chat where you can ask me questions directly. If you try to ask me questions in the comments, I probably won't see them. If you try to ask me questions on Discord, I definitely won't see them. If you try to ask me questions on my subreddit, I probably won't see them. If you try to ask me questions on Patreon or Subscribestar, where you're paying me to see you, I probably won't see them, especially with the $5 tier. But if you pay $10 on either Patreon or Subscribestar, you get into my phone on the private behind the scenes patrons chat where you can ask me any questions you want, throw questions out to the group, who are all fucking audio psychopaths. They've got these already. Like, you think I'm special because I've got this? No, no, no. People in there, they climb that $10 paywall and they're all CEOs somehow. And they all own every... They have spent way more in audio than I have in that chat. But once you're in there, you not only get to ask me questions and them questions or give advice if you're not a total psychopath, but you get into a private swap meet channel for life once you're in there because people need to start this hobby and buy things and end this hobby and sell things and you get in that and I don't remove you because it's too hard to figure out who's a patron or not so that's got 300 and something members in it that you can buy sell and trade gear with you can say I want to buy mini DSP Nano Digi which by the way I'm looking for one of those because I know they stopped making it and they changed it with something else which I got to get into with mini DSP um, but yeah you get into that for life and then don't forget to check out the Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forums most of the forums, Hi-Fi Guides itself hasn't been updated in forever, and I apologize. It's just DMS and I have to agree on things, and we kind of do a little. Plus, he's in Germany right now, that son of a bitch. He actually went to uh, the Munich audio show. I was invited, and I'm just like, mm, next time. Because my format doesn't really lend itself to like going through a show. There are me at show videos on the internet. It's just a head cam or a stick with a camera on it, never looking at my face. Except for Paul. Um, so yeah, wallpapers, links to these fucking dumb, dumb, dumb as fucking amazing headphones. I'm sorry I put you through the pad thing, but you have to understand if you're not happy with a headphone or if you're making a headphone, you need to, this is what you need to do. You need to just everything. Everybody's pad. You don't make it. You find one that works. You replicate it or you buy it for them and you sell it. This is this is a this is a miracle. These are mir this is a miracle headphone once you get that fucking nailed down. And this pad might not be the best pad for you. It's the best pad for me, unless it's this pad. Maybe one of these. Maybe something I read on this piece of paper. Here, I'll I'll slowly scan it. I don't want you to can you can you can you grasp the, the madness that is me now? Weird highs. Upside down lows is the best thing I've ever written. I feel like upside down lows is something that that, that you should see a doctor about. So yeah, I'm done. Thank you for stopping by. I'm sorry I took up your whole night, but mm, it took some coffee and many hours, so I'm going to get my fucking money's worth. And I should do mid-roll lads in this. Disturbed. Anyway, I'm done. Faye, amazing wallpaper. You very rarely see Faye uh, fan art, like, ever. I can't even find any statues when I was in Japan. Um, I'm going to shut this off before I forget. And I will see you all in two days or on the second channel for the sound demo and other videos. Are we done? Oh, thank fucking God. Thank you, Owen, for sending this. And oh, my.